Today on Tippa DaVinci, I'm going to show you how I install my NEMA 1450 outlet. Now this is for entertainment purposes only. This is not like a how-to guide, and we highly recommend you get an electrician. We're not responsible for anything that happens if you do it yourself, and uh, just keep that in mind. First and foremost, if you have an older house and you have a 100 amp service panel, you'll probably want to get that upgraded to about 200 amps. You'll have to hire an electrician. Uh, when I did this five years ago, it cost about $2,000, and then you'll have to get your utility company to make sure that the wire running from the street to your house is also 200 amp rated. All right, the second thing is if your electrician says that he's gonna run eight gauge, tell him absolutely not. Tesla recommends at least six gauge. You could even go four if you wanted to, if you wanted to future proof a little bit more, but make sure you're using at least six gauge, which is how thick the wire is. The next thing to do is figure out where you wanna mount your outlet. My wife will be parking her SUV on the left side. And because of this shelving unit over here, which is really close to the garage door, whoever parks on the right side can't access the right doors. So that means that this is where I ended up installing my NEMA 1450. It is a 50 amp, 240 volt outlet here in the US. But when you buy your Tesla, it'll come with the mobile charger and it will come with a 110 if here in the US. And so this is what I had been using, this plugged into any regular old outlet, but it only charges about four or five miles an hour. That means over 10 hours you've charged 40 or 50 miles. And that's not enough for me, so I couldn't get away with this. The next step up is a level two, they call it, a 240 volt, and this is what I have installed. This does not come with your car, this is about $35, and I had to buy it, and this goes and plugs in right there. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't install the Tesla wall charger, the reason was, well, it's $500, and I personally don't think I needed that. The reason is because this Generation 2 charger can pull 32 amps, which will give me about 28 or 30 miles per hour. The Tesla wall charger can pull 40 amps compared to this, which can only draw 32 amps. And as a result, you can get about 38 to 40 miles an hour instead of 30 miles an hour. All right, the first step is to get access to your panel. I have added circuits to my house before, so I got a easy access panel that I can just remove. You'll have to cut out drywall and position your new two circuit junction box where you want it to be. I've chosen a location right here on the right side of my garage on the back side. Now to run wires to this, you'll have to go through any studs. You'll notice that you have to drill a hole to go from the circuit panel over to the new outlet. So I've done that, and once you've finished that, you can go outside and take off the cover from your service panel. This is what the wire actually looks like. This is what 6.3 Romex, that is stranded, looks like. It's really thick and it's really hard to work with. This is a lot more difficult to work with than your average 12.2 or 14.2 that you would run to the rest of your house. Again, because of the high levels of amperage you have to draw. All right, so here I fished it through and I am running it into my panel. Be generous and leave yourself a lot of extra room because you might not know where it goes. And in my example, you see, I don't have any open slots. So first step, go turn off your service panel. So there's no power in my house right now. I did it at a time my wife and my son were out of the house so I wasn't bothering anybody. So the strategy here is to find a place with two 20 amp breakers and a 30 amp breaker to consolidate all these different breakers into one quad channel breaker. This will free up enough space for me to add a new breaker. And this sort of stuff is why you should hire an electrician because things for me never go right. It's always more complicated. And unless you know what you're doing, best thing is leave it to the professionals to do. But yeah, you see me now, I'm taking off all those different circuit breakers and I'm basically reorganizing them in a way to free up space. So this is that new quad breaker that I'm going to introduce. So this is a 20 amp that used to have its own breaker. Now it's just gonna take up one thing, tiny little space on this new quad breaker. And by the way, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, I would really appreciate it if you considered using my link. We will both get a thousand miles of free supercharging and it helps us get more traction with Tesla so that we can be invited to future events and stuff. So thank you very much. Okay, you unsheathe the wires. And again, this is what 6.3 looks like. You have the black 
the red and the white. So the white is your neutral wire and that gets screwed down to the neutral bus bar. So again, really hard to work with here, but I had to move some wires around to make space and you have to tighten this stuff down really, really tightly. So you unsheathe the new 6.3 and I'm feeding that in and screwing it down. All right, so now I'm in the process of adding the panels back together again. And I put everything back just like it was before. And you see that I have space now for my new breaker. So the way this gets 240 volts is because you notice that the red wire and the black wire are touching the two different bus bars of the two phases of 120. And as a result, it is a 240 volt draw. So now I turn the service to the house back on, but I left the new circuit breaker off this 50 amp line here. Leave that off until the end. And also, I actually left about 10 inches of extra slack on the wall. And the reason why is in the future, maybe I wanna get a wall connector from Tesla. Well, I can just take the NEMA 1450 off and install a Tesla wall charger. So just like before in your service panel, you're going to unsheathe the wire and cut it down to size. And now once you've done that, you're ready to unsheathe the wire. There's a little guide there it tells you on the outlet just how much you should unsheathe because you don't want to have exposed wire you want the circuits to and the wires to sit all the way into their slots the tricky thing here is to make sure that you install the wires at kind of a 90 degree angle because again these wires have to get pushed back into that housing and the first time i did it i wasn't able to so i undid everything cut the wires kind of to a different size got some pliers bent them at a 90, 90 degree angle and then installed it again all right, so next step is you have that. Take the piece of drywall that you replace it with and look at where the new outlet is going to sit and cut out a hole for that. This is a little tool that I use for whenever I need to cut straight lines. It's uh, really, really handy. It's one of these tools that when you need it, there's really no replacement for it. But um, yeah, I'll put a link to this if you're curious what this is. I'll put a link to most of the stuff in the description. I cut that out now and voila. I can put it back up. And you'll probably use drywall, but I actually used wood again because I might need to take that off again or do more service in the future. But I put the screws back on and I'm putting the main panel cover back on as well. Now we're in the home stretch. It's all wired and now it's just a matter of cleaning everything up. I have some drywall putty and I'm just repairing the patchwork. And again, this is the garage. A lot of garages aren't finished, they're not painted, they don't even have drywall or insulation. But don't forget, before you clean up and do the final putty and patchwork, to test it all out. So take your car, move it to the right side, and plug it in and test it and make sure that everything works. So I actually took the piece that I cut out and I took it to Home Depot and I had them color match it. And I asked them what's the smallest size of paint I could buy and they told me it was a sample size. It was only about $3 and they matched it perfectly, and here I am just finishing up everything else. So here's what the final product looks like, and here is that Tesla mobile connector plugged into the NEMA 1450 outlet. Final piece of this was, I got this $15 part on Amazon. It is a really cool wall plate that holds your excess cable and has a little place to put your wall charger when you're not using it. All right, so to wrap this all up here, you have three choices, level one, two, and three. I went level two, NEMA 1450 outlet. Again, the cool part about this is if you have a friend who has another kind of an EV, this is a standardized plug. It doesn't have to be for Tesla. You can plug in a Tesla or anything else to it. Tesla actually sold a wall connector with a NEMA 1450 plug for a while. If they had that, I would happily buy it and use it. But um, until then, I'm happy with my mobile wall connector. Another thing is if you use the Tesla wall charger, you can actually uh, daisy chain a couple of them together in the event that you get a second EV. For me, what I would have to do is run a new circuit up and over to the other side of the garage and install a NEMA 1450 over there. So with my NEMA 1450, I can charge between 28 and 30 miles an hour. With a Tesla wall charger, that goes up to 38, maybe even 40 miles an hour. So you have to figure out if that extra bit is important to you and factor that cost in as well. So hopefully this runs down the nature of the work that's needed. 
The materials are going to be around $100 to $300. Again, that 6.3 Romex wire is really thick and expensive. Factor about $2 a foot. So if you have to run it 50 feet or 100 feet, that could be $100 to $200 just for that cable. As for labor rates, that will really depend on where you live. California is very expensive, but I think my work, based on how long it took me, I would approximate that an electrician would have charged me $300 or $400. Now, Chris has a NEMA 1450 that he paid to have installed, and his cost closer to $800. And the reason why was because in his house, the service panel is on his house while his detached garage is maybe 20 or 30 feet away. So they had to run the 6.3 Romex wire underground, under the foundation, and bring it back up. So that extra bit complicated things for him and raised his price. But these are the kinds of things to look for, and at least now you should have an idea of the labor and the effort. So if you have the skills and the know-how to do it yourself, cool. Otherwise, at least now you kind of know what goes into it and how to plan it, where to put it, and, um, and hopefully get that installed. Now, there's one other interesting thing. In the Generation 1 mobile charger that Tesla gave you when you bought your car, which was like in the early days of the Model S, it was actually a thicker wire, and it actually pulled... 40 amps from the wall. The generation two, which is what the Tesla's come with now, has a thinner wire and only draws 32 amps. Why they did this, I'm not exactly sure. It's probably like just weight and easier to wrap up and manage, but you can actually buy these generation one chargers from like eBay, for example. So leave me a comment if you're curious, I can buy one and, and test it out. All right, so final piece of advice is if you have time of use metering, meaning you get charged based on the time of the day, then this is gonna be really important because I could have potentially gotten away with the 120 outlet if I could just leave my car plugged in and just charge all day, but I can't because from four to 9 p.m., my electricity rate is 50 cents per kilowatt hour, which is absolutely crazy. But here in San Diego, we have SDG&E and they have a EV time of use plan, which pushes the super off peak time from midnight to 6 a.m. down to just nine cents per kilowatt hour, which I think is basically what everybody else in America pays all the time. But anyways, that's the best we can do and that's really, really great. So it's crucial for me that I charge my car between midnight and 6 a.m. So having the NEMA 1450 and charging at 30 miles an hour times six hours means that I can charge about 180 miles a day. Check with your utility and make sure that that's the case and find the charging solution that works best for you. Because if there's a time of the day that's cheaper, charge then. And even if there isn't, I would still recommend that you charge at midnight. Because if you charge during peak times, even if you're not gonna get billed for it, peaker power plants will probably be turned on to provide that power, which are the dirtiest and most expensive power plants that we have. All right, that, that is it for us. Thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful, share this video, give us a like, don't forget to subscribe. We have tons of stuff coming. And um, we're just really excited to finally have my Model 3, and we're going to have a lot of videos coming up. Thank you so much. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Da Vinci.